the reign of Big Frank had to come to an end. La Capella figured out a simple solution to get rid of the tyrant, but life can't always be that simple, right? The night after the game was over, Big Frank was panicking, trying to figure out his next move. Of course he had to get out of town because he decided he was not paying his debt. He at least knew that much for sure. The next thing was, he needed to get in contact with someone that could move his safety plan into action, and that was to ruin La Capella's basketball career. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Capella was happy. He had won a city championship, and he was the talk of the town, which turned out to be a great thing. A few episodes back, La Capella was informed that North Carolina was no longer interested. Well, there were a lot of schools interested in Capella, and they would often show their interest in the form of gifts. The most recent gift was something that Capella couldn't turn a blind eye to. I mean, it was just too big to not see, baby. The staff over at Kentucky had been reaching out to Capella for months, and now it was decision-making time. It was time to pull out all the stops to lock in a superstar athlete. The terms were pretty straightforward. Capella would receive the car and drive it for the next couple of weeks to see how he likes it, but by the end of the last week, he had to report back and make a decision. If he said yes, the car was his. If he said no, there would be someone there to pick that car up that same day. Capella decided to keep the new wheels while he made up his mind. Now, back across the city, Big Frank had planned his escape from the debt and planned to make his move on La Capella soon. He decided to let no one know of his disappearance, but due to all the fast movement, he forgot that someone from the gang was coming over that same day. So, you can imagine how awkward it was for all of Big Frank's bags to be packed when everyone knew he owed a lot of money. But Big Frank thought he played it pretty cool, and the gang member went on his way, and so did Big Frank. He was going to drive until he got out of the city, and when he made it to his destination, La Capella was next on his list. La Capella was in a tough spot now. Although the gang had won all of Big Frank's money, and he should be happy, he knew that there was something he had to do that wasn't going to be easy. He had made up in his mind that it had to be done immediately because there was no other way around it. He had to protect everything he had built over the years, and no one could stand in the way of that. It had been raining ever since Capella got the car, and you all know that it never rains in Southern California unless there's something evil on the horizon. To make big moves, you gotta take big chances. This move was masterminded by none other than La Capella James, who would go down as one of the baddest motherfuckers in Southern California. His move was to get rid of Big Frank, and it was all made possible with one gift and somebody from the gang. In order for everyone to find peace, sometimes we have to start over again. In order to break out of old habits, we have to remove ourselves from the things that trigger that habit. Paula had devised a plan to rid the city of a bad habit, and he knew he had to remove that trigger. They wanted peace, so it was time to start over, by any means necessary. Once the deed was done, it was time for Capala to make his decision on what college he would attend. Of course he said no to Kentucky, and decided to stay close to home instead of going elsewhere. After all, he had a city to run.
and welcome back to your morning cup of joe my name is joe and today we got a new hit on the charts from the vocal james himself called do it do it it's taking over the city one spot at a time only on 105.9 Ooh yeah hey! do it do it do it bitch do it come here Give me them horns. Do it, do it. Ah, yeah. Got to do it, do it. You got to do it, do it. Don't you stop. Just drop it like it's hot. Yeah. It's your boy, IJ. We are back on the NBA 2K23 PS5, that is, version of the La Capella James. My career, and you see we have made it to the college series. Man, I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far, man. Great intro, beautiful intro, a long one. So we're only going to get one game in today, and that's going to be the official debut for my man La Capella at USC, the University of Southern California. And, man, I hope you guys are enjoying the story. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I hope you guys appreciate the hard work that it takes to put in these type, this type of content because I'm having to make every team from scratch. What I'm doing is taking the starting five of each college team back in 1983. This is the 1983. So my boy has been at USC for a while. I'll explain that in the next episode of this video. We're going to move three years ahead, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, we basically will be in the 1983-1984 or just the 1984 NBA draft class with Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon. Sam Perkins, etc., etc., and you'll see these guys. We'll go up against these guys in college as well. So I hope you guys are excited for it. I'm done talking. That's enough talking. Let's go ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy this debut of La Capella James in college. Let's get it. Welcome to CBS. We got some great college basketball for you. And listen, the Kentucky Wildcats are going up against the USC Trojans. And they actually missed out on La Capella James when it came time to recruit. They truly did. A great standout player in the, the Southern California region. A horrible, horrible mistake from the Kentucky Wildcats. That's right. And what a superstar he is. Let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. Jack, singing for the one time. Jump off, get it, get it. Jump off, get it, get it. Jump off, get it. Oh, Lord. Let's get right into the action chat. This is the team that should have gotten my boy Lockefeller James. I mean, you seen the car, you seen the wheels, you seen the whip. That thing was looking beautiful, man. I might say, and look, from that first bucket of my man's college career, collegiate career, whatever you want to say it, hey, hey. These boys in Kentucky really needed them desperately, and they are missing out. What a what a journey it would have been, you know what I'm saying? What a legacy it would have created for Kentucky to get my boy La Capella. But he started, he decided to stay home. You know what I mean? True blue. <laughs> you know what I mean? They doing their thing right here in USC. And I'm excited, like I said in the intro for this series. Look at the tough layup again. We're gonna be going up against Michael Jordan, Hakeem Elijah winning. You feel me? <laughs> Clyde the Glide Drexler, Sam Perkins, you know, uh, Patrick Ewing, just the name of Fear and Chad. It's going to be an exciting, nice little series that we got for the college journey, man. And we, and we got to see what my boy going through off the court. You know what I'm saying? My boy called a body little homie. You feel me? But <laughs> we want to see how that affects his path and how the James legacy was really birthed right here, man. And if you don't know where the family tree is, make sure you guys check out episode one or two of this series, or you can check out the Joy James series, and that should be in episode one for her. But we getting into it. You see, I got takeover. 
Well, boy, it's already taken over, almost outscoring the Kentucky team by himself. 28 perks, two boards, one assist. You know I ain't even trying to pass the ball. This is my debut. Wait a minute. I'm not trying to pass it. Understand I ain't come here to pass this ball. I'm a hooper. I'm a scorer. I'm a runner. I'm a track star. You <laughs> know what I mean? I steal the ball when the game gets hard. I dog it on a fast break, dog. You know what I mean? Sign me already. And though there are no three-pointers in, well, not yet. That didn't come into effect until 19, wait a minute. <laughs> 1986, I want to say. Something like that when the NCAA adopted the three-point line. So even though we did shoot a three right there, 2K kind of counted as a three, even though I don't personally, and neither should you. Let's play make-believe, but chat. That's the end of the game, 74 to 116. Unheard of numbers for that time, you know what I mean? That's because La Capella is really a superstar, but I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far, man. If you are, make sure you guys leave this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on post notifications if you are new to the channel and you wanna see some more NBA 2K content just like this, and I got you guys. But until the next one, man, Peace. Court of Scoot and Dame sounds crazy. It sounds ridiculous. And I hope Damian Lillard is excited to be able to get some of that weight off his shoulder, especially as far as scoring goes. Scoot's going to come in hungry. I know it. That's why I went ahead and put my boy Scoot on the Portland Trailblazers. You see it. Now, if, you, if you're new to the channel, you're just now checking this video.